or either your children have an inherited genetic disease passed down from your parents to you or from you to your children that causes intellectual and developmental disabilities. It is heard that it affects around 1% in 4,000 boys and affecting around one girl in every 8,000 girls approximately. But the number is increasing. Imagine if you or anyone in your family is affected by this, how would it make you feel? Shalini Kedia, the founder of Fragile X Society of India, founded this society and organization in 2003. And she is working very hard to create awareness on this subject, Fragile X. I'm sure you have not heard this before. Fragile X is one of the leading causes of inherited intellectual disability and autism worldwide. The families affected are growing in number a lot faster than the awareness on this condition. This organization has supported around 2000 plus families affected by the condition, most with one or some with even three children affected. As a founder and chairperson, she is always striving towards dispelling the ignorance on fragile X related conditions. She is not just empowering, but also intensifying humanity to her best possible extent for the well being of the people suffering from fragile X condition. Let us welcome Shalini Keria. Hi, Shalini. Hi, thank you. Thank you for so having me. to have you here in uh, Intensify Humanity podcast. Thank you. How have you been? Very well. Absolutely. Trying to stay safe and sane. Yes, absolutely. So I'm really glad to have you here, especially because, you know, you are working in a domain that I am sure majority of the people, including me, have never heard about it before. So now uh, to begin with, what is Fragile X exactly? And how did this movement start of yours? So um, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes, which we've all studied in school and science. I was not very good with my science, but yeah. So we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. Our chromosomes carry our genes, which are like information boxes carried down through generations. One example I enjoy giving is when you meet someone with light blue eyes, we'll usually ask them, oh, so in your family, who has it? Because we know that it's inherited for sure. And every time they will say either it was their grandparent or a great grandparent or an aunt. Similarly, that kind of information is carried down generations in our genes and our genes are carried in our chromosomes, okay? So on the X chromosome, we have a gene called the FMR1 gene. This gene, when it mutates beyond a period of repeats after it crosses generations, it shuts down and it shuts down the work it's supposed to do, which is to produce a protein essential for brain development. In short, the child whose repeats have crossed 200 will have a condition called Fragile X syndrome. This is the science behind it. Fragile X can lead to intellectual disability, speech delay, developmental delay, autism, autistic traits, sensory processing disorders, and a whole lot of things. Now, uh, there's very little known about this condition because this gene responsible for Fragile X was only discovered in the year 1991. That's 30 years now. In 2003, we started a very tiny support group for families whose children are impacted with Fragile X to connect them with each other, usually these families always felt very left out. They felt alone. They couldn't speak to anyone else about it. Connecting them to another family who's in the same shoes, exchanging thoughts and ideas, what therapy works, what works, what didn't work, was the initial goal of our organization. I would spend two, three hours explaining to the families what is Fragile X syndrome, how has it impacted your child, his development, his learning, 
what are the things you can do at home to make the life a smoother journey also most importantly the genetics of the condition being an inherited condition it was very important for them to go for genetic counseling before they planned their next child during this process as we grew we came to 100 200 and 300 families and we started seeing families with three and four children affected which was an alarm we said now we need to do something more than just supporting families of children who are already affected where is the awareness so let's start spreading awareness on fragile x and that took us to a second mission which is spreading awareness for this inherent condition which passes down generations silently i mean i'm speechless <laughs> this is something how you started off and how it actually affects is it's like so silent that nobody will even know it even people who have it they are also ignorant about it so i mean this is massive and just like you said uh we need to do something and the first step is awareness so i'm sure people who are listening to this and even if you have it in your family or you know somebody i'm sure it is going to help you so shalini uh, let's hear from you like till now you have helped so many families out there what is the most concerning factor or situation you have come across in your service till date you know the first most worrisome thing is when the mother takes the blame on herself every mother we've spoken to says i feel guilty and getting the guilt out of the way is the first step to helping the child bloom so that guilt is important of course the taboo around special needs or being different is so big that these moms don't even want to take their child to the garden because they say that people stare at us so these are things uh, which we as a community as a society as a country as citizens of india can make an a powerful movement with besides that of course it is the ignorance the ignorance on the condition which lets it pass on to more than one child in one family that is a huge concern for us because that means the first child who actually has fragile x syndrome is living with a diagnosis of something else when they get the right diagnosis they get the right treatment and you're looking at a better prognosis for the child plus the family goes through genetic counseling and can make medically informed decisions for the next child i mean the part that you specifically mentioned that the most concerning factor is the guilt the mother takes on herself and uh how much time does it take for these mothers to come out of that phase and how often have you seen the family supporting and understanding and accepting the reality it can take one day it can take a year it can take 5 years it can take 10 years accepting that your child has a condition is not as simple as me saying it and you doing it not at all it is a journey that the parent goes through within themselves it's a transformation it's i've come across this so many times i'll be at a conference and a couple comes running to me and they are like very happy and they are like ma'am we heard you at your last conference 6 months ago and it made us think and from that day we realized that why are we judging this child why are we giving the child conditional love why are we in our hearts every day saying we will love you more the day you can speak and we thought of saying that okay we'll give you unconditional love and that unconditional love and acceptance has changed our life so 
I, I cannot really define a time span as to how long, but the important part is having a platform where you come across other women and other mothers in your shoes being able to speak about how you are feeling and the other moms are always there to uplift you. Sometimes a mom will say, oh God, you know, I'm just so tired. And the other mom will be like, hey, come on, you can do it. You know, this is what happened. That is important. Having that support is important. And that's what we give them. Absolutely. And how important is the father's role in this entire process? The father's role, of course, is very, very important. Uh, A, from lifting the guilt of the mother is the first role. Many mothers uh, expect the fathers to be very hands-on when it comes to therapy, etc., etc., and uh, I kind of say, okay, yes, that is an ideal situation, but trust me, dads are not as strong as moms. Women have a lot more power. Yes, I'm saying that. And I tell those mothers, I said, if your husband is going out and is the bread earner and is providing you with the finances to help you take your child for therapy, that's a big step in itself. And then if you're expecting him to also participate in therapy sessions, miss work and do that is probably asking for a bit too much because it's going to impact the finances that you have to look after that same child. So it's a very, it's a very thin line uh, and the role changes from families to families. And uh, when you say like the therapy sessions or the treatment or the ongoing process, is there any approximate range of the spending in terms of finance that these families have to go through? It's a very expensive affair, <laughs> trust me. You know, some doctors, when I tell them, um, why didn't you suggest testing before they had the child and they say, oh, it's so expensive. I'm like, okay, let's try and calculate the cost of raising a child with special needs. On an average, if you wanna go to a good therapy center, not someone which is uh, for the non-affording people, and you look at five to six therapies a week, I am looking at 15,000 a week. That's 60,000 a month. And that family will spend 60,000 a month for probably two years to help the child learn to walk when everyone around you has their children running around just on their own. So in finance aspect as well, it takes a lot of time to cope up with the situation for majority of them. Wow, you are actually sharing some really bombs out here <laughs> on a topic that I'm sure hardly anyone has heard of. Very, very, very few people have heard about. So uh, Shalini, what is the scenario in India compared to the rest of the world? You know, um, everyone asks me that question and everyone thinks in their mind that the awareness in India is very low, but I am going to put it across to you in a different way. The awareness in India, the doctors in India are amazing. I applaud every doctor because they actually work so hard. The awareness is good, but why is it so magnified? Because of our population. You look at our population, it's a combination of the United States, Europe, and a few more countries where you have 25 organizations working for that cause. And out here in India, there's one organization. So it's not the doctor's mistake. It is, uh, what else can we do? I don't like blaming people. I like to take onus and look at what can we do? We can, why, why should a mother wait for the doctor to recommend something. Now that we've gone on to this whole mass awareness thing, 
we've seen mothers come up and say oh you know my child is four he has autism and nobody spoken to me about fragile x i said okay so now you go and ask your doctor about it it's okay it's okay if the doctor didn't know but now you go and ask the doctor and the doctors are very accepting very hands on and very happy to help the child so the scenario sounds very intense in india is because of our population if i tell you one in 5000 children on an average have fragile x syndrome that makes it fall at like individuals only in india so ideally i need around 60 fragile x societies in india <laughs> then we'll be good to go Well, wow. and you have started the movement already, the Fragile X Society of India. I mean, hats off to your, you know, contribution and commitment. So, uh, now coming to a very basic question, okay, what is the first thing a person should do if diagnosed with this syndrome? The first thing a family usually uh, would do, and ideally most of the doctors would guide them to us because uh, what happens is today how ever well read and educated you are getting a getting a report getting a piece of paper saying your child has a condition called fragile x syndrome and giving them books to read is not enough to satisfy the parents quest so uh, i do recommend them to connect with us where in we break down fragile x into layman's words explain it to them and by the end of this 3 and 4 hours of course the first call starts with them howling and crying but at the end of the 4 hours they go back with a plan they go back empowered that yes this is what i can do and most importantly by me telling them you're never alone and you can contact us 24/7 we have a helpline we connect them to a whatsapp group with around 300 families who are active the rest of the families choose not to be active that's completely fine and it's very beautiful because in the the minute i introduce them they will be like hi and i am from here and you know it's like a family we give them a family for a condition and that family you can't get elsewhere so i think that's the first step because because from there you you move on to okay these are the therapies that are needed this is the approach that's needed this is what has worked for someone else this is what has not worked for someone else you're doing a lot of data collection and then you process it and you go on right right so that is first you know something like someone having a helping hand a community a place to fall back upon yeah yeah very That's very amazing amazing okay what is shalini's mission in life my mission in life is fragile x that's it just one mission i wasn't <laughs> born with that mission i wasn't born with that mission but today it's fragile x i mean sometimes people around me actually make fun and say you eat drink sleep fragile x you can give a lecture on fragile x in the middle of your sleep and you will be scientifically correct and like yes of course that's me <laughs> That I think that's huge. <laughs> I think that like synonyms, fragile X and Shalini Kedia are synonyms. Like <laughs> that's a huge compliment, by the way. And which, uh, you know, lets me uh, ask this next question: like, if you are not working, if you are not working in uh, helping these families, etc., when you are taking some time off, etc., what are your hobbies generally? Oh, I well, um, craft. I mean, uh, my husband. envies my passion for craft because he complains my craft has more space in our bedroom than his wardrobe which is a fact what so, what type of craft i do lots of craft it's it's so satisfying i have a blog which is uh, which very clearly says that we don't sell our products <laughs> i don't know why so, so what I, is your blog name craft excel i'll share craft excel craft 
X in it's X C-R-A-K. in okay so you will uh, listeners you will have the link uh, <laughs> I'll put it in the description you can also check those crafts but you do not buy <laughs> It's a little inactive, so it'll have things to do with clay, uh, felt. Um, I have a poodle dog, and I'm poodle obsessed. So then you'll have a lot of things with poodles coming up suddenly. Wow, you and- are creative. <laughs> Good dog. So, so it's like, so my craft. I can actually spend an hour just with the craft cupboard opening watching the things I have and any country we visit for a holiday uh, my husband will always keep two hours for me to visit their uh, stationery and craft store anywhere in the world that is simply amazing I I think I'm I think I am a craft holder and yeah like (laughs) that is my crafts person (laughs) yeah I just I just love creating I mean, even if I'm decorating, even if I'm giving someone a gift, it's going to be gift wrapped so beautifully. It's going to have my heart and soul in it. And I love doing that. Which makes me ask this question, who would Shalini Keria be if not running the movement of Fragile X? Wow. (laughs) Uh, So when I was in college, I only had one plan, plan A. No plan B because I'm someone when I make up my mind I get it there's 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 no way that I don't achieve what I want that's me a uh, very very strong-headed hard-working person so my plan A in college was uh, by the time I'm 30 I would be on a business magazine as a business tycoon yeah that, that I just had plan A there was no plan B Maybe something is happening. It's just (laughs) (laughs) rerouting in a different way. And I'm sure it will happen sooner or later. So all the best for that. No, I've given up. Uh, No business, nothing. Now it's only fragile. I mean, you know, it's it's so funny because I, I excel in so many things. So many people will say, why don't you start selling your craft? You know, it's so beautiful. Or uh, I'm very good at doing my R&D and uh, very often there's this international chain of uh, a salon which will say, we would love to hire you as an R&D manager. Or someone says, why don't you just join us into this? And you know, if you do this, we can earn a lot more. And I always give them just one answer. I said, I can do everything you're telling me to do, but just tell me who will do what I do. And that's that, an amazing answer. That is a lot more important to me. It's soul satisfying. I said you can pay someone ten times the money you're offering me to hire them, but who can replace me? Get me someone to replace me. Then it's like that is my passion for fragile X because because nothing else is more important to me. That shows your commitment level and yes, the absolutely. love you have to help these people. Amazing, amazing. So, I mean, that's your calling. That's my calling. Yeah, That's absolutely my calling. So that, I guess that's why I didn't have a plan B because God sitting up there was laughing. He's like, okay, Shalini, make your plan A, be a business tycoon, everything, everything. And everyone, you know, has a plan B. I didn't have a plan B because God was like, okay, I'm going to push you somewhere else. (laughs) And there I am. (laughs) But this movement is also going to be huge. I'm sure. I'm sure. So uh, what is the message you want to give to all our listeners today? So the biggest message I would give to every listener who uh, is here is don't think, what can I do? You can do a lot. You can spread awareness. You can uh, be vigilant. You come across someone who has autism, just just ask the mother, have you heard about Fragile X? You know, I saw someone talking about Fragile X and autism being connected. Let them do the homework. I don't expect you to be experts on Fragile X. Just follow our page. We have a lot of things. Take up a Fragile X challenge. Start a movement. Be a part of our campaign you are actually going to be surprised with the difference we can make. The power of awareness. 
we have we've had we've had families diagnosed because someone decided to join our campaign and put a story on instagram and that mother saw it and she actually managed to get her child diagnosed and the right treatment so i would send out a plea i can't have 26 or other 60 fragile x societies of india i would love to but i want 6 million individuals in india whoever can listen to this support the movement support the movement make a difference in someone's life that's the biggest message i would give absolutely and where can our listeners connect with you if someone wants help related to fragile x or someone wants to work with you and contribute in this movement how can they connect with you and where all can they connect with you sure so um our website is www.fragilex.in we have a helpline number 9820199092. On our website, of course, you have our email address and everything. And the best part is our, our handle uh, name on all social media profiles is Fragile X India. So that's very easy to remember. Whether it's Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, it's just Fragile X India. So you just, if you just feel like going over to our Insta page, see what other people have done. There are some people are celebrities. We have Bowman Irani, sir, who's given such a cute talk and urging people to support Fragile X. And you know, you can you don't have to do anything big. But remember, whatever small thing you do, you really don't know how big it would be for the other person on the other side. That's important. Absolutely. I mean, this is amazing. It's just that you take like drops of water can make an ocean. So you just need to spread awareness because I keep telling my, uh, you know, my listeners and everyone like ignorance is not a bliss. It's a disease. So the more awareness is spread, the, you know, more lives can be saved or at least helped. Yeah, absolutely. That is, and yeah. I, I am not against having multiple children with the same condition, believe me, because I know there are many families who are okay with it. All I'm saying is let it be an informed decision rather than an imposed ignorance. That's it. Yes, and that is amazing, Shalini. And thank you so much for for being with us today on this show. And I am sure everyone who is listening to it might have got a complete new perspective about this completely new subject today. And I'm sure that uh, many people would be, you know, getting the help with this kind of awareness. So thank you so much for whatever you are doing. And I also want to congratulate you uh, for you being the TEDx speaker. So <laughs> recently, and congratulations for that. Um, that speech was amazing. I watched that and all the best. And we wish that Fragile X, as you said, grows to the level that you want to grow it and helps lots and lots of lives. So all the best, Shalini. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure being here.